Okay, so we will um, we'll get started. So thank you again for everybody for being here. We are going to be taking you through our presentation on the step-by-step -step guide to starting your own short-term rental business. And um, I'm Stephanie Lowe and um, my co-host is Jennifer Beckford of Imagine Design and Decor. And um, we're both gonna be um, kind of splitting the time today. We're gonna try our very best to keep it to an hour. And um, as I said, uh, you will be able to request the recording if need be. We have, um, Jen and I have worked together um, on on listings um, for for sales in real estate and um, she has also personally done work for my own short-term rental uh, properties and she's helped many clients successfully do that as well so we just thought it would be really um, really great very um, impactful, very empowering to share some of our success tips with you guys as industry experts, as people in the field, um, not only coaching other people on how to do this, but um, having done it ourselves many, many times. And um, and we're both real estate investors. So um, we're going to show you guys how to get into properties from you know, um, properties you don't own from like things through leases um, called like Airbnb arbitrage, um, all the way to like um, understanding how to purchase uh, resale properties to use for short term rentals and even some pre construction opportunities here overseas everything so we've got a lot of great info to share with you today. And I'm going to try and hop in to that now. Okay, so we do have a chat box. Hi, <laughs> we do have a chat box. So um, I want you guys to feel free to use that. So if you do have questions as we're going through, you can go ahead and chat, um, um, type those questions and comments in your in the chat box. And then Jen and myself will do our best to um, answer those questions um, as we go along or as we're transitioning from one um, presentation to the other. So we do want you guys to be engaged and ask questions because this is for you. Okay. Um, so what interests you about short term rentals or what interested you when you um, saw the post that we were having this call. So we want you guys to go ahead and type in the chat box what it is that interests you. Are you looking to start um, a short term rental business to replace, you know, your, your current job, your current employment? Are you looking to just create some cash flow? Um, have you had interest in purchasing property overseas and you want to see about how to start something like that, um, you know, to just generate income off your own vacation? property right there's a lot of different options and we want to hear from you guys so please utilize the chat box oh also um jen if you can type your contact information in the chat box i said i was going to do that so i'm going to go ahead and put mine in there as well so i'll just put my name extra income good idea this is a great great way to generate extra income so thank you althea and keisha more ways of creating passive income i think i saw there um, how it works. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, definitely, please share those of you who have stayed in Airbnb. If you had, what did you love about staying in your Airbnb? Maybe that's another thing you guys could share in there. So I'm going to post my phone number. I'm really good at texting and WhatsApp. This is probably one of the best ways to get in touch with me. The second best way would be to email. So that is there for you guys to get on my broadcast list or just ask some questions and uh, kind of follow up after the call. Passive income, awesome. Lots of people, passive income. And um, just wanting to understand how Airbnb works. So for sure, um, you'll get a lot of info on this and I'm sure you'll probably end up um, booking it and trying it out for yourself. We've had some amazing experiences, um, you know, staying in places that you might not normally have access to, to be honest, um, with, with family and friends and, um, you know, really creating beautiful memories. So we'll get into all of that. And thank you guys for sharing. Please continue to share and we will continue to watch the chat box. So I am Stephanie. Hi, I am an award-winning realtor and author. My book is Wealthy Home Sellers, where I help 
coach people on how to maximize um, the, the successful sale of their property. I work for Manor Hill Realty. We are a, um, a boutique brokerage located in Etobicoke in Toronto. And I cover all over though. <laughs> You're gonna see that onto our call today. So I assist folks in building their real estate portfolio. I'm very, very passionate about investing. And when I'm helping people in the market with buying and selling, I think um, my unique view and advice is always looking at things from an investor mindset. So I want to help you buy a home that you love and a home that works for your families and, you know, could be your forever home. Um, but if it's not and you move on to something else, <laughs> I want you to be able to make money off of it. And I want it to um, work for, you know, your future wealth and your future well-being. So um, I love pre-construction. So I'm very, very passionate about pre-construction properties. And I'm going to share um, a few of those with you guys today. Some things that I love. Um, when it comes to helping people in real estate, building generational wealth and financial freedom, I really think that's what it um, really can do for you. And I love to ask people, you know, what is freedom to you? Because I would say um, real estate has definitely opened doors for me and um, um, just really has changed my life. And a lot, again, has you know, given me access to a lot of really great opportunities and connecting with people from all over the world, truly. And it's just been wonderful. So I'm very, very passionate about it i'm passionate about how it can change your life how it's changed mine and um i always try to do things from a very you know abundant and holistic approach so i always tell folks that my mission is to help all of you that i work with achieve abundance in your mind so your mindset being healthy and focused and uh you know prosperous for you and your body so taking care of yourself and enjoying the the wealth and um, experiences that you um, you know are, are building and gaining along the way and in your bank account I want you to be prosperous and free financially free so that is me um, so we're gonna get into some of these um, some of these steps now so step-by-step -step guide to starting your short-term rental business, okay? So the first thing here is goal setting. It is very important um, as you are getting into this, um, into this business and into these opportunities to understand your why. Why are you doing this? Because there are a lot of different ways to, um, a lot of different properties, a lot of different markets, types of properties, locations, and understanding why you are doing this and what you hope to gain out of it is gonna help you to, um, to target and focus in on the opportunities that are best for you. So I saw some of you guys saying short-term rental you had interest in this because you wanted to create some streams of passive income so creating more cash flow um, for some of you you want to continue to expand your real estate portfolio and you're looking to build equity and equity we say really helps to go towards your long-term wealth and cash flow is kind of like your they say maybe rich it's money it comes but it can go and so we really want to understand the difference between the two and then your long-term goals. Um, in terms of short-term rentals, they can be automated. So if you do have a full-time job and you're just looking to create um, another stream of income, you can find ways of, of doing this business without doing it full-time, which is great. And, um, and that's where you're really gonna try to distinguish. Are you just trying to get like one door, a couple of doors, five doors, or are you trying to build, you know, 10 doors or 10 properties and really expand? And like I said, you know, retire your boss or um, become into full self-employment. Um, so, with Airbnbs and with short-term rentals, truly, as you build your portfolio, you can quit your job. There are people making six figures and really, really great um, income every year. Uh, there's a lot of different platforms that you can use. So there's like Airbnb, VRBO, Expedia. Um, these are all different platforms that can be synced. You can also create your own website and platform where people are booking directly with you. And so maybe you're saving your customers, you know, repeat customers or something, um, some, some fees, or maybe you're charging those fees and it's going directly to support your business. So that is another way of, of doing it. Um, I really want you to be encouraged today as we discuss the different options believe in yourself you can do it um you want to make sure that you do your due diligence like being on this call today and getting the tips and working with industry professionals who can help to um, guide you and direct you uh, in the right way um follow the steps consider that there's going to be highs and lows in any business there's high and low seasons and so 
keeping that in mind, you want to make sure you're planning for your success. Um, we have these expert tips. I threw in some expert tips throughout as I was um, compiling the information for you guys. So here's one. Um, I really think it's important when you have a dream and you have a vision to ignore some of the naysayers, ignore the negative commentary. Even as I was posting and sharing about this call, I got a lot of negative feedback or negative comments. And, um, you know, there's people who say short term rentals and real estate business is what's causing increased home values. And then there's some that saying it's decreasing home values and taking away from neighborhoods and it's causing the housing crisis. And, um, um, you know, people are making a profit and uh, raising rents and um, being predatory. These are all these things that I heard. But to be honest, I encourage you guys to focus on your goals and do it with good intention. Serve and do your business with love. Create beautiful experience for, for people. Um, I've gone to Airbnbs, let's say in Jamaica or in Niagara Falls with my family, with my friends and all of our kids have been together. And it's been beautiful. So, you know, with, with this business, you can truly impact families, bring people together and just know that as you do it and as you do it with love and with heart and integrity, um, you're investing in yourself, you're investing in your family's future and you're serving your community. So there are a number of different ways of breaking into the Airbnb or short-term rental market. And here are a few. Um, again, as I was posting, some people were, you know, feeling a little resistant or hesitant to think that, well, if I can't buy a property, then I can't do Airbnb. And that is not true. There's a number of different ways of doing it. Um, one of the ways is to rent your current home or rent a current part of your house. When we talk about house hacking. So maybe you do have a vacation property instead of letting it sit, sit empty for some time of the year, you can utilize a short term rental and help it to pay off your mortgage. So you're able to enjoy that property again with your family and friends without all of the cost. Um, perhaps you have an extra room in your home. And so therefore you can run Airbnb, you can help out a student, you can help somebody in the community or who's transitioning and you can create a business with out of one single bedroom or a basement. Um, with house hacking, um, it's sort of the same idea. You're sort of subsidizing your mortgage and your expenses by utilizing the space in your house. Um, seeing people build like accessory apartments on the top of a garage or utilize the basement or if they have a separate entrance and create um, a little a little unit. Um, glamping is something that's pretty cool. So there's folks who perhaps own a piece of land. You can buy a piece of vacant land and perhaps you're near trails or water, ski hills, areas where people like to go ATVing or fishing, and you put up tents. You can put up tents. You can put up um, prefab homes. So those are like little pre-built houses that they, they bring there. You can build a, um, like a cottage or a cabin, which can be more expensive, um, but something as simple as creating a beautiful experience with tents on property can make you thousands and thousands of dollars every month. Rental um, arbitrage is a really uh, an excellent entry point um, and that is where you will go and talk to different landlords so you don't have to actually have a mortgage on a property but you will sign a lease let's say you're leasing out the property for fifteen hundred dollars a month and you're running your Airbnb business and you're making twenty five hundred dollars a month or forty five hundred dollars a month that two thousand dollars extra that you make is your profit Pretty good deal, right? Um, there's also co-hosting. So even if you're not at the place where you're ready to rent or go out and start the business because you gotta you know, have expenses with furnishing and stuff like that, maybe you're gonna start the business as a co-host. So you're gonna help somebody else run their Airbnb business um, and help them manage. And um, I do go over some of these rates later. Most of the time you can charge like 15 to 30% of a monthly income income as um, as a host for managing someone else's Airbnb. And when I talk about um, understanding your vision and planning and step by step, um, definitely understand that it's a process. So maybe you start as a co-host and you save up your first 10,000 and now you reinvest and you move to the rental arbitrage platform because now you have the funds to furnish and advertise a property or maybe you do rental arbitrage for a year and you've you know that two thousand dollars a month now becomes twenty four thousand dollars for the year and now you're gonna 
get a, a second one. And now you've gone from 24,000 to making close to 50 a year. And now you have a down payment and you can buy a house or you can buy a piece of vacant land, right? Just step-by-step, step, understand the process, understand where you wanna go and you will get there, okay? The second step in the process is to get pre-approved. And I think this is a very, very important piece of the puzzle. So you want to understand your position. So understanding um, where you are. Knowledge is power. Don't be afraid of getting this very valuable information. You're going to get feedback on your credit score if it needs to be improved and how much and what kind of interest rates you can access. A big Big piece of the pie is going to be understanding your purchase price so how much buying power you have in the market and this is going to help you to identify what you can look for and where okay and again we're going to share lots of points on this but what vacation spots can you buy close to um, any major attractions a larger city that people you know need to get to work or school or something like that businesses um, what kind of short-term rental needs are in the area Surprisingly enough, in some of these smaller towns outside of the major cities, there's a really strong demand for short-term rental from companies of construction workers or people who have short-term contracts and they just need a place for three or six months. And there you go, okay? Um, so this pre-approval letter that you will get once you're pre-approved, you've gone to talk to a mortgage broker to get your pre-approval. This is gonna also give you confidence if you're gonna be buying. So you'll be able to confidently um, submit offers and find and lock in the right property. Um, again, that Airbnb B arbitrage is an option to build and leverage on your cash flow and your expect and your ex sorry expertise if the pre-approval shows you that you need more time to build in some areas. So you've gone through the pre-approval process and they say, you know what, right now you're not able to buy. That's okay. You go ahead and you start your Airbnb business and you take that time, that year that you're building and saving and getting experience running your short-term rental business. You also use that year to pay down your debt and improve your, improve your credit. You're adding income to help you um, boost to be approved for a larger mortgage. Okay, it all works hand in hand. So here's my next expert tip. Understand that building a real estate portfolio takes time. So strategize and leverage so you can make your way closer towards your ultimate business. Vision. Understand that anything in real estate is not a get rich quick scheme. It is not. There are ups and downs and there are fluctuations and you need to um, have plan A's and exit strategies and plan B's and all this kind of stuff to really manage and, um, to, and, and find true success. Okay, so step number three is to study and understand the market so also another really important tip so what markets have properties that are within your price range you want to look for interesting locations so again shopping plazas where people want to take weekend trips and go shopping or you know it's by water there's beaches and rivers or waterfalls and mountains again just outside larger cities vacations popular destinations um what kind of interesting properties could you could you purchase? So um, think about here kind of inserting your creativity. So maybe you love camping and you love the outdoors, glamping. You could probably come up with some really cool um, ideas and experiences and setups that you know folks who maybe aren't so into that wouldn't even think of. Again, the prehab full, uh, homes or tiny homes or just if you own a large lot, putting up a second something on your property and utilizing your space, these are all opportunities for you. Those are accessory apartments, okay? And what experience can you provide folks who are coming out? A weekend of relaxation has a nice hot tub and a sauna in the backyard and is clean and bright and someone's just going to come and relax and the, you know what i'll say as an airbnb um owner it was really nice when people left a review and said you know what it was a great we just needed a weekend away and it was a wonderful time thank you so much you know um which listings as you're doing and studying the market you're doing your due diligence what listings are doing really well okay open them up, look at the pictures, study the, um, the write-up that they used, understand what is selling. And this, a good occupancy rate is gonna be somewhere between 60 and 80%. So if you're noticing that a place is really booked up, see what they're doing, understand, okay? Um, when you're considering nightly rates as well, 
how much do you need to charge to cover your costs? How much do you need to charge to hit maybe your monthly cash flow goals? And you just want to understand what's happening in this market. Um, you also want to study what the short term rental rules and restrictions are in this area. So for Toronto, for example, short term rental, what would be classified as a short term rental would be anything less than 28 days. And if somehow you don't meet those criteria, then perhaps you want to change your short-term rental to a mid-term rental, which means people got to book at least 29 or 30 days in your place, okay? So I did see someone say, oh, well, Airbnbs are banned. So, you know, why are you hosting this webinar? <laughs> well, I said, you can still do Airbnb. It doesn't have to be in, you know, just do it in a city where it is allowed or, you know, is in a market that suits where your interests are or maybe it's overseas or maybe it's in another province. So open your mind. Don't be closed-minded. Don't be focused on the negative. You can do this. Just be creative, be resourceful and study and understand um, the markets and where you want to go. So my expert tip here is go on Zillow, Realtor.ca, Airbnb, talk to your realtors, understand what area and what cities have a good high demand for rentals. What properties are in your budget in these areas? What are the short term rental rules in those areas? And what could you add to the market that's really going to stand out, be attractive? Um, marketable and get you more business. So I'm going to talk to you guys um, about a pre-construction project. So I, I put in a few of these just to show you different options that are available and out there. And this is going to be an example um, when you're studying a market, some of the things you want to look for. Okay. So I always say, I love pre-constructions. Everybody who knows me, I love them. Okay, so new constructions. Why would we want to do this? Why does building a new home crush buying an existing home? All right, so um, when I'm looking at a short-term rental, here are some reasons why I think pre-construction would be great. There's minimal ongoing maintenance because it's new. It's often under warranty. Um, you're going to have the pride of creating something new. It's going to be very marketable because it's new and shiny and pretty, okay? Uh, you're gonna gain equity during the build phase of the project. So you buy now, it closes in a year or two years or three years, whatever it is. During that time, you are gaining equity on your property and you have zero expenses. And when it closes, you've had time to save up for the furniture to make it a really amazing show-stopping uh, short-term rental, okay? So um, please understand short-term rental is not always an easy thing to execute. So again, you do have a few years before it closes and um, you may have to come up with 20% down because it is a um, investment property. So um, here's an example of an Airbnb uh, pre-construction opportunity in Calgary, okay? So prices are from 279,000. So if you've been pre-approved for 300K or less, this would be an option for you. You need a 10% builder deposit during the month of March. You have 5% off the purchase price, which is cool. Free parking, new shiny appliances. It's a very low cost to close. So it's a lot cheaper um, closing in Calgary than here in Toronto area. So like your lawyer fees are about 1500. You have no developmental charges, no land transfer tax, no HST. So it's a really marketable area close to mountains, lakes, and there's visitors coming all year round. And here again are some of the numbers that you also want to consider. So you're going to see how active is short-term rentals in the city that you're looking for. So for example, in Calgary, 2,453 active short-term rentals. And then you can see how many units are for rent, um, how many units in this particular part of the city. So in the northwest part of Calgary, we have 388 active short-term rentals. Um, most short-term rentals in this area are detached homes, basement suites, or shared accommodations. Well, here's an opportunity, opportunity to own a condo that's facing the mountains in the northwest part of the city. Not all condo buildings, again, not all cities allow short-term rentals, so you wanna check it out. This building allows it, awesome, okay? Um, so there's a range from one to two bedroom condos here. And again, it's close to golf courses, restaurants, trails, Kenmore, Banff, Lake Louise, hiking, skiing, sightseeing, fishing, all the good stuff, okay? Um, the occupancy rate. So again, we talked about high and low season. So for example, in August, we have a high occupancy rate, 88%. Like I said, a nice range is somewhere between 60 and 80%, okay? Low season in January is 50%. Your high seasons, you might make $3,400 a month. And then in January, in a slower month, you might make 
a thousand dollars let's say here's a thousand one hundred okay so your one bedroom low season could be 88 and you could make let's say 197 and a high season on a two bedroom and remember with airbnbs the more beds the more heads you can host the more money you can charge so let's say um, in this picture this is a one plus den so in the den you threw down a murphy bed or pull out couch and now you have somewhere where the parents could stay in the main room kids on the sofa couch and sofa bed there you go even six even six kids sleep you have a murphy bed in the den got a pull out couch in the living room and then a master, beautiful master, okay? So you just wanna be creative and see what you can do. So this is an example of some of the numbers that you might wanna pull, okay? Um, and also those are for sale. <laughs> All right, so step number four, we're gonna make an offer. So after you've um, thought about your why, you have done your pre-approval, you've researched the market, you found a really hot market with great prices and great opportunities, numbers look great, you're going to make your offer. So this is the next step. Now I'm gonna start from the Airbnb arbitrage, for example, and this is like a leasing opportunity. So let's say you're here. What you wanna do is you're gonna research the rental market. You're gonna see what properties are available for lease in that area right now. Um, and you're going to go and talk to the landlord and say, hey, have you been having trouble with tenants? You know what? I've got a really great opportunity for you. I'm going to lease out your place and I'm going to take great care of it. Um, you're not going to have all the wear and tear of like regular family living in the space. I'm going to clean it like every couple of days or in between guests. Um, I will might even sign not only a one year lease, but I'll sign a two year lease or a year and a half. And you know what? Instead of paying you $1,500 a month, I'm going to pay you a premium. I'll pay you $1,600 or $1,700. You know, make a nice deal, make it attractive. Um, also, you may be able to talk to some of your friends and family who are looking for more opportunities for passive income. And maybe this is a co host opportunity. Hey, I noticed you got that spare room in the basement. Would you mind if I? brought you with an opportunity, I'll rent it from you from $1,000 a month, and I'm going to do Airbnb, you know? So lots of options there. Um, this is an option to also get a quicker start and gain some experience in um, in the short-term rental business because you don't have to go through the process of um, like putting in offers and, and a buy might be 30, 60, 90-day close, that sort of thing. So it's a little quicker. Um, but some of the drawbacks from doing um, this lease or arbitrage method is that the landlord is the owner of the property. So they could sell at any time. All the money and time you put into setting up that Airbnb, if they choose to sell or end the lease for any reason, all that, you know, you're out of control. You're going to lose it. They're going to sell it. And you're going to have to start it all, all over again. Okay. Um, they may put some particular restrictions. Um, maybe they only want a certain type of guest or tenant staying in their space. Um, they may increase the rent on you. And so now you're going to need to adjust your numbers. You don't have control over that. Um, it's just a little bit more uncertainty with your investment, your time and your money. Okay. The other thing, when you're leasing, you're not getting that equity. So here's an example. Let's say you have four doors okay so four different properties um and when i say doors it could be like two properties for example and there's two units in each house that would mean four doors okay but in this case i'm going to say you have four properties so let's say in one year those four properties let's say each one appreciated fifty thousand dollars so at the end of one year four properties gained two hundred thousand dollars for you okay and then also let's say each one of those doors was cash flowing two thousand dollars so that means at the end of the year from your cash flow you you took in ninety six thousand dollars so overall for the full year your equity and your cash flow helped you gain three hundred thousand dollars worth of um, of equity, of wealth, of income, okay? So um, if you are leasing, of course, you're not gonna be holding the asset. So you're gonna lose that equity gain and you're just gonna have the 96,000 of cash income. And then we always say like cash is king, we wanna have that cash coming in, but it also comes and goes. It's not an asset that's transferable that you know you have all that flexibility with. So something to consider, a long-term strategy if you um, aren't at the place where you can buy yet, just let that be a goal for you, okay? Um, when you're making your offers, definitely consult a trusted realtor with your purchase. They will help you to access and assess that cash flow as well as the equity because we're going to study the market for you and see year over year how things are appreciating. And again, property is transferable. So if rules in your area did change, you can sell your property and you have access to that equity that you gained. You are the one who's in control. There's no surprises here. You can shift as well. Like I said, if rules do change, maybe 
maybe you're shifting from the short-term rental to more of a mid-term or long-term rental, or maybe you want to go into traditional leases and you still have access to that equity. You're avoiding some of the restrictions and limitations um, by kind of changing your model a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between leasing and owning, but this is how the offer process goes okay so you want to lock in something make an offer make a decision go for it and if someone says no that's okay keep asking keep searching keep researching keep putting in offers don't give up all right step number five so this is the remodel and uh furnishing aspect okay so my expert my <laughs> my expert tip here is to compare the listings in your area of interest look at the design trends and the quality of the listings if a bunch of folks have been taking pictures with their cell phones um bought a lot of secondhand um stuff designed it themselves and you know just threw some old bed sheets and bedding on the bed um and you have taken the time to consult and again considered the design trends and hired a professional photographer and team to help you your listing is going to definitely stand out okay so look at what's happening look at your competition and be competitive beat them okay um, see where you can add value what little changes can you make your return on investment to help to not only force the appreciation of your property but also increase its marketability and rentability in um, in the market okay so um, have funds to turn a deal into a star property so when you're making an offer maybe you got a good deal because a home needed a little TLC awesome there's options for you to talk to a mortgage broker and get something like a purchase plus home improvement loan where you will have um, a lender give you funds to make these changes and add the appreciation and add the value to your home, okay? Um, when you're doing these things, please consider your return on investment, as I said. So remodeling and doing nice touches to kitchens, bathrooms, your master bedroom. This is a cool tip. So like where people are renting, um, usually the folks who've booked are usually the ones staying in the master bedroom. So make it beautiful. Make it comfortable. When they're sleeping in the bed, they're like, oh my gosh, this place is so amazing. They'll leave you a great review and come back. Okay, put <laughs> take your time with the master bedroom. Make sure the home is clean. Uh, it's clean, fresh paint, everything. Um, you're gonna get a good return on your dollars there. Also with uh, furniture and setting up household items, I think a great budget could be somewhere between five and 10K. If you have a detached home and lots of rooms, might be a little more. If you have a smaller space, might be a little less, but I think this is a reasonable budget to set. Um, in the market right now we're definitely in a buyer's market so if you're going for resale consider you can negotiate get the home inspection understand how much money you're going to need to bring that property up in value um understand the appraised value maybe there's again some room to negotiate on the price point um we also have sellers in today's market who are buying down interest rates for the buyers to make things more affordable so please consider these things um as you are searching in the market today um, here's another example of, of a house hack where, like I said, a house hack is where you're just kind of utilizing the space in your house and finding out how you can chop it up and make some more money. Okay, so this is a home that's located in Hamilton, for example. Um, it's an active listing. It's on 27 Hope Street in Hamilton. So it's a three bedroom upstairs um, bungalow, I believe. Oh, no, it has some, that's the basement. Um, no, it's a two-story home, sorry. Three upstairs, one bedroom in the basement, which is finished and has a separate entrance. So my mind's like, okay, separate entrance, that's great. If we just wanted to house hack this one, we could do something with the basement or you can make it a two-unit home, okay? And run it that way. Um, for example, in Hamilton right now, short-term rental or vacation rentals are, uh, are okay. You will get a permit from uh, the county and you are not allowed to have signage on the outside of the property and it cannot be rented for group events and it cannot have more than five sleeping rooms so this property would be a property that fits with those um, standards uh, in Hamilton the property value is 499,000 so again looking at your market looking at your price point is going to help you determine what might be a good fit for you okay so the next 
thing we want to consider is building your team, okay? Having a team of people that you trust and who know have your best interests at heart are very important. And there's also some folks that you just want to have around to help make sure your Airbnb runs smoothly, okay? So my first word of, of advice is to not always take the cheapest route. Um, you might save $5 on something, but honestly, it might cost you $500 in the long run, okay? So if something needs to be fixed, like like there's a leak and a plumber can't come out for a few days, that leak over a few days could cost you lots in your water bill, could damage the flooring, right? So it's going to cost you more in the long run. Try to resolve any issues that come up as soon as possible. That doesn't mean that you have to drive out and do it yourself, but rely on your trusted team to get it done. And again, please remember you get what you pay for. Okay, so some of the trusted professionals that you should want to have on your team, um, write them down, remember them, very important. Okay, handyman or maintenance person, and I would say to have a few, just in case they're not always available for you. Um, pool maintenance person or hot tub, someone who could handle those water features is very, very important. Um, pest control, because nobody wants to be staying in Airbnb with roaches or mice or squirrels in the roof. Okay, um, have a couple of plumbers or, and I say some of these from experience uh, plumbers are contractors okay um, so make sure again you have someone a few of them around that if there's a leak if something is backed up whatever they can get there and handle it um, professional photography is super super important honestly it really makes a huge difference and that could co cost you anywhere from five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for um, depending on, on what they are capturing in the property having a cleaner okay so you have turnovers if you have a guests that's staying for like a week or four days or a weekend and um, usually the cleaners are going to charge a little bit less because it's just light cleaning they make the beds they put the mints on the pillows the wine in the living room restock the water bottles you know little things like that it's just a turnover um if it's a larger space they might charge a little bit more the deeper cleans are usually done for someone who stayed a little bit longer six weeks three months whatever and that could be eighty dollars per hour so that's just some rates that we see in the market okay have someone to to do lawn care and snow removal landscaping to keep the property looking nice you don't really want to be rushing out there on a friday afternoon shoveling snow so have your team have a realtor you trust you can run some properties by and get some feedback you know um your mortgage broker like i said very important for your pre-approval process and um, having a co-host or a co or a host is going to be awesome I definitely use them and I, I appreciate uh, my host so much <laughs> and that just helps kind of keep things a little hands off. So if you do have another job and this is a, a way of creating that passive income to make it more passive, you ought to have someone helping to manage it and they may charge anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of your monthly income. So that's something to consider. The more hands off that they are, then the less that they will charge. Them. Yes. Did I say that right? <laughs> you know. All right. So uh, well, again, here is just get started. So partner with somebody. Maybe that's what's going to help you to get you guys partner together. Um, Co-ownership. You buy a property in Jamaica and now you are going to um, work together to come up with the cost to furnish the property and this sort of thing. OK, um, again, arbitrage. Maybe that's how you're going to start. You're not at the point where you're ready to buy a property yet. So you're going to get out there. You're going to see what properties are for lease in your target areas and you're going to go for it um, leverage your annual income to expand your doors so we talked about that maybe saving your um, uh, airbnb income for a year and then getting a next door getting another property step by step keep building buy your vacant land you know these sort of things expert tip here remember that um, real estate and the short-term rental business honestly is an opportunity that can change your life you could retire your boss, get into your retirement, um, become self-employed, build wealth and equity through your portfolio. You're taking care mm -hmm. of your family. Um, again, early retirement, having properties for your children and you know their future, school and business and these kind of things. Explore your creativity, find what you love and what you're passionate about and do that. And also please remember that mistakes are definitely part of the process. I have certainly made them, but I think it's really important that we just embrace our failures and take some of that um, criticism and some of the negative comments and don't let it hurt you but let it refine you and improve and see how you can just become a better host okay 
Um, here is another one. Now, this is the last one before we get over to Jen. So this is a um, opportunity in Dominican Republic. Okay, so this is a pre-construction property and the income, why I chose to show you guys this one is because the income is awesome. Okay, so this one, they're breaking ground in the spring and it will be completed by next year. So again, here is another income opportunity. So these ones, for example, start at 150. Wow. Oh, sorry. sorry, they start at 109,000, okay? And then they go up to like 160. So on some of these units, you can see some of your expenses. So they've just based these numbers on 60% occupancy. And again, like I said, 60 to 80% occupancy is really um, is really good. Um, annual income on some of these, 23,000, 26,000, 18,000, 30,000. This is off one unit, one bedrooms or a studio, okay? Um, you have expenses like your um, utility bills phone internet you may have maintenance fees on a on a um a condo and so they've written out overhead and then the cap rate is like your return on investment so this is just an example cap rates of 12 to 15 percent and this would be something you would manage with what is abroad so you can utilize apps you would find um cleaners you trust or again, property management company or host. You can do this, you can do this, okay? And this is just some examples of what's there. So what would make this a great short-term rental, okay? Um, it's close to beaches, 24-hour security. Um, they've got good internet, cable, four swimming pools, Olympic-sized pool, three restaurants within the community, a gym, volleyball, basketball, football, four tennis courts, ocean view, a spa, a water park, 10 attractions, more pools, beaches fishing okay you guys get the point so <laughs> we want to pick something that is attractive to folks and when they see it their hearts light up they want to be there they can visualize themselves there and again we're creating these beautiful experiences for families and for ourselves too okay so we are going to switch over and Jen is going to share um, her part of the presentation, which is much more visually appealing than mine was when she was sharing it. So I appreciate that. Um, but I hope that you're enjoying our webinar so far. Please let us know maybe in the chat if there's anything that stood out to you so far that you thought was a really good tip. And um, I'll let Jen get set up as I stop sharing. Just give me a moment. This no would problem. be a good time while I'm bringing this up. If anybody has any questions for Steph, because that was a lot of inf great information, Steph. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I'm. I'm sorry, guys. I always have so much that I want to share, and I apologize if it was too much. But yeah, feel free. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Okay. So no questions. Great. Good. Okay, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hi, I am Jennifer. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit about some short term rental tips just for preparing the actual listing. There's a lot of good stats and locations and, and exciting things that Steph shared. And I'm going to talk more about like the visual and, and setting it up. Okay, so my name is Jennifer Beckford. I am the founder and co owner of Imagine Design and Decor. Um, I am an interior decorator, a short-term rental stylist, and a professional home stager. So Steph also mentioned that I am a real estate investor as well. Uh, here are a couple of highlights. So the global hospitality um, is expected to reach a compound annual growth of 151% after COVID restrictions. So meaning everybody is ready to travel again, um, and the numbers are showing it. The majority of the business received is from leisure business and leisure trips and Airbnb's revenue to increase by 76.6%. So while we're seeing a lot of things in the news that are saying that uh, their Airbnb is in Ontario, um, there's some issues with that. There's a lot of great options outside of here where um, you'll be able to, you're seeing a tremendous growth. So um, Steph has some great um, options in Calgary, in Jamaica, in Dominican, and all of those are still areas that are thriving. Okay, so location is extremely important. So that's one of the first things you're going to want to think about if you want a successful um, Airbnb or short-term rental. Where you host ultimately dictates how much you can charge. 
So you're gonna to wanna to secure a property in a marketable location. Things to consider when choosing your location, something that has some really good nearby attractions. So she mentions shopping centers, lakes, beaches, stadiums. Um, you're gonna make sure, wanna make sure that especially when it's overseas, that they are in safe neighborhoods. You're gonna do a little bit of research. Um, gated communities and some of the amenities and the things that Steph was sharing are like top of mind. Um, close proximity to airport, that's also very important. A lot of the times after traveling, people would like to be you know, fairly close. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to research all of the rules and regulations for the area that you wanna be in. Educating yourself in the law will obviously prevent you from any legal issues in the future. Knowing the municipality's rules and regulations, any mandatory taxes in that area for having a short-term rental, and the maximum occupancy rules. Having all of that information beforehand is definitely gonna impact how you wanna price your property. Okay, cleaning and maintenance. Um, are you in close proximity to the property? So some of the options we're seeing are obviously not something that you can jump in your car and drive to. You're gonna to wanna to think about whether you wanna use a maintenance company or you're gonna find some individual partnerships that you can create. Um, are there local cleaning companies you can part partner with? Is the property in a different region or so? How Who are you gonna hire? There's different property management companies. And I know some of the um, some of the properties that Steph's sharing, there's actually connections that you can make with recommended property management companies in those areas. And they've already been vetted, so that's really great. Okay. Another thing that you're going to want to do is identify your target market. Obviously, if you have a three or four bedroom house, you're going to be looking for families or group traveling. That's one of the top reasons why Airbnbs have become so popular because it's a lot easier to travel with a large family if you rent a home, right? Um, people still like to prepare meals and that type of thing while they're away rather than eating out all the time. Usually breakfast is something you wanna have at home. Um, a lot of hosts actually offer cooks that can come in, that like local cooks that will come in and prepare meals for family if that's an issue. And that's another way to up your points is offering something like that. Um, you could be catering to couples, business professionals, professionals. Also, if you're in, you know, if it's a cabin, more of a cottage type, um, if you're in the Caribbean, if you're in more of a like a kind of getaway type area that's more natural and not close to all of the big city amenities, amenities um, you're going to be targeting naturists and outdoor lovers. So you're going to want to style the property with your target market in mind. Families with small children um, really appreciate things like, you know, um, having a, uh, uh, you don't travel with a high chair often, but having one, having childproof areas, um, plastic dishware, games and entertainment for children, children uh, friendly furniture as well. So if you have a property that obviously it is designed, um, has bunk beds and that type of thing, you're gonna wanna have entertainment for the children. Um, if it's a smaller property, you know, like a one bedroom condo, um, it still can be very luxurious. You're gonna, your target market's probably gonna be a couple or a business professional. In that case, you're thinking of more like the ambiance, the relaxation and luxury items. So probably you want to invest in a high-end shower, right? Making sure that when they're in there, they have like a beautiful rain shower head. Um, you have things like robes, for example, uh, basic toiletries, um, you know, Q-tips, um, little bo sample bottoms, bottles of body wash, shampoo, all of those types of things. Um, and if you're uh, targeting like the naturists and the outdoor enthusiasts, um, Steph had talked a lot about um, glamping, which I've seen people do. Those types of things, it's great if you can get a couple of extra bikes, um, canoes, any type of outdoor activities. Obviously that's the target. They're gonna enjoy those things. Um, being able to offer an experience so there's activities within the property that they can do. Um, it's definitely gonna set you apart. Another good idea is to partner with local businesses. So sometimes you can get them to um, give vouchers and such, and you can leave that in a gift basket. So you wanna create a, a unique experience for your guest. Um, the average person generally only spends a few weeks a year vacationing. During this time, 
we're more inclined to spend on luxury and comforts. So you want to make sure that time that you have away from work and your regular routine is very enjoyable. So we tend to splurge a bit when we decide to, to take some time away. Ways to make the guest experience unique. Um, create a welcome basket that can include local get goods. So if there's a local bakery, you know, some muffins or pastries, um, uh, souvenirs, and a personal welcome note. And I've seen that myself. Like I've stayed in many different Airbnbs kind of all across the world. And when you, when you, especially if there's an occasion, leaving a basket saying like happy anniversary with a bottle of wine and a couple of chocolates, like it goes a long way. Um, a welcome book, you always wanna have that where you're just reading the guest to the house and it has everything that you need. For example, access codes um, on any doors, Wi-Fi passwords, your contact information or whoever you have hosting or managing at that time. Um, any instructions for any appliances, you know, if there's if there's a hot tub, if, you know, sometimes we're in different countries. I remember going somewhere and this still worked very differently than ours. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and house rules, because, you know, especially if it's your own property, some of these beautiful ones that like Steph shared, it might be somewhere that you want to vacation and spend time there. You want to set some rules so that when you go there, you can still enjoy it, right? And it, everything's still intact. So you got to be concerned of your neighbors. So you want to make rules for what time music should be off, uh, whether there's pets allowed in the house, all of these different types of things, everything would be in the book. Okay. This way. Okay, some of the things decor wise that really elevate your space and will help your photos kind of pop out and to stand out differently than some of the other listings, um, a feature wall. So a feature wall is, is an accent wall like we see here with this navy. Um, it could be wallpaper, concrete panels, wood slats, or custom tiles. And you see some prices there of approximately how much it could cost. Quality of furniture. Um, you'll save money in the long run if you actually make an investment of higher end furniture, um, especially if you're, for example, if you're near the water, um, you probably want to get leather, um, if you don't want to use a lot of metals, if you're in the Caribbean, because things rest rust easily, right? Um, when I've seen that in Airbnbs, if you're close to the ocean, very quickly things will start to rust and you got to be strategic with what you're going to use. Also having furniture that's functional. Um, so it allows storage and aesthetics. Um, then pricing. So you want to watch the market and offer different incentives to get started. So you might have, um, I've seen often where people will give the a third day free, right? They're only allowing. So if when you start, start out creating an incentive that makes you a little more attractive. And then I have here just with property management and you can automate this. It does sound a little bit overwhelming, but when it's overseas, especially, it's a great idea to have it automated and use a property management service. Okay. Another, we talked about experience. Um, one of the biggest things that really will get you a lot of money is a hot tub. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so hot tubs um, increase a nightly rate and occupancy rate by 13%, um, and an increase of an average of about $39 a night. That's at an 80% occupancy rate, that's $11,000 a year, over 11,000, um, just for having a hot tub or a water feature a fireplace or an outdoor space, recreational experiences, outdoor games, horseshoe, putting, Jenga, a deck, gazebo, um, all of these things can also boost your rates. Upgrading your master bedroom, Steph had touched on this a bit. Um, great bedding, memory foam mattress, comfy pillows. Um, remember that the person that's going to do the review uh, is typically is staying in their master bedroom. So you wanna make sure their experience is top notch. Okay, then we're going to talk a little bit about marketing your property. Um, it's really important to put a quality product out there because the main, um, the property demand is primarily based on reviews. So the best marketing will always be a stellar experience, spending your energy on just making sure that it's a really great space that is clean, well-maintained, um, that you're quick to answer any inquiries. 
all of those things will ensure that you're getting great reviews. Also, um, invite your guests to review the property, right? And it's not mandatory that they do. So following up with them and requesting a review is actually going to be um, great for you to get to that super host status. Okay. Branding your property, um, giving your property a face or a name to relate to it. So there are properties that are themed um, that I've seen have worked quite well. That's a great way to be able to bring out your creativity. Um, but to give your property a face and a name and create a brand, uh, a brand name and a logo, that creates better recognition. And that branding you can use on social media. Um, for example, Instagram, Facebook, even YouTube. Encourage engagement from your guests. Your guests use personal hashtags, post and engage with local businesses. So um, I've there's a an Airbnb sometimes that I go to in Ontario, and they have really great engagement. All of the local bakeries, anything that's close by that their guests should experience and enjoy, they tag and interact with online. They also have a board within the home that. Um, lists, you know, if you feel like pizza or Chinese, where you want to go to eat, if you wanted to go shopping. So it's really, um, and that's something that can be included in the book, all of the close by um, attractions that might interest your guests. Okay, so I just have a little bit about us. Uh, one of our main slogans with Imagine Design and Decor is good design is good business. And it applies especially to short time rent, short term rentals. Um, having attractive photos and having a fresh, clean, luxurious feel when you walk into a space that you want to spend time in. It feels like you're away from home. The last thing we want is to go and stay somewhere and your quality of living at home is even better than it, right? So you want to definitely make sure that you're um, putting the energy into the space so that it's just an enjoyable retreat. Some of the things that we offer um, is we can design and create a great guest experience. We create the welcome book with custom details. Um, we can also build social media pages and partner with local businesses. So we would find some of those local businesses and attractions, put them in your book and see if we could actually get some of the coupons, you know, 10% off just so they can go to these things. So your gifts, your guests feel like they're getting something um, added value than just a place to stay. And then we can also organize professional photography to highlight all the properties features. At this time, that's that's what I have for my portion of the presentation. I'll give it back to Steph. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna pop into the chat. Um, I saw a few comments. Curious to learn the requirements for non-residents who want to buy properties in Jamaica or DR. Um, Keisha, I can definitely talk to you about that a little bit more, but um, basically if you're looking to purchase a property overseas, just um, like check in with the realtor that you're working with. In most cases, there's not too many restrictions. Um, like buying in Jamaica, for example, you just need a tax registration number, which anybody can get. Buying in the DR as well, there is no restrictions there. Um, there's actually a lot of incentives, like not paying property taxes for, um, for a few years and discounts on land transfer tax and business write-offs. So, a lot of times, and especially in some of these Caribbean countries who where tourism is a really big industry, they want folks to invest there. So um, yeah, anybody who's interested in definitely Keisha, you and I can talk about it and um, in more details, but definitely an option. Um, definitely type of furniture. Yes, Jen, someone commented, Karen said she loved your comments on the type of furniture, like in Jamaica and the rest. Uh, <laughs> um, I love the idea of branding. It will go a long way. Yes, this is a business. Branding is very, yeah. very important all right cool thank you guys so much for being so interactive we appreciate it um jen if you stop sharing i will share oh yeah and we are almost done we are almost done am i sharing maybe not i don't see you sharing yet thank you dun, 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 dun. There we go. All right, cool. So, oh no. Okay. <laughs> we are wrapping up. So, yeah, I want to say thank you. 
I want to say thank you so much to all you guys. And yeah, if you guys do have any questions, please, 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 you can post them up in the chat room. We will hang out for a little while, um, for a couple minutes. I think we are just at our hour time now, and we do respect your time, and thank you guys for being here. Um, this is Jen's information, if you guys needed to jot it down, and she is on Instagram, at Imagine Design and Decor, and you can see some more of her beautiful work, and reach out to her if you have a property you want to help get set up on Airbnb. And um, again, I am Stephanie. Here's my info. And more than happy to help you guys navigate some of these markets and look for different opportunities overseas and different province or local market. Um, I do think that home ownership, of course, is a great way, like I said, for just building long-term wealth. Um, but you do not have to start there. You can start anywhere that makes sense for you. So thank you so much. Anything else, Jen? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very Good. much. All right. Thank you guys. So yeah, and if you do need a copy of the recording, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll make sure that you guys get it. And, um, and you can feel free to share. So have a great night. Hello. Hi. Hi, Steph. Did you say that in Calgary, the new pre-construction, you have to hold it for a year? How long do you have to hold it for? Oh, before you flip it? Like if yeah. you want to, you know what? I actually don't know what the flipping rule is in Calgary. I would have to ask somebody because I, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been asked that. Most of the folks that are uh, like most of my clients that are buying Calgary, they are either doing like an assignment sale. So like if you buy now and you sell before it closes, then you would make the difference in the equity, right? You buy today, property raises in value 40 or 50,000, you sell. So that's not an issue. Um, some people are utilizing the rental guarantees and the rental guarantees are usually two years. So at the end of the two years, then you would sell. So no one's really been running into that issue. Um, and then the other one is the short-term rentals, right? Where folks are just running their business so um yeah I, I can ask my broker because our broker is here and in calgary if there is a like an anti-flipping law or something like that in place i can find out okay. yeah thank you yeah. yeah thank you so much for joining us i hope you got some good tips yeah that was great yeah okay excellent